you're looking at a 1988 Alfa Romeo Milano. This Italian grocery getter is swathed in a Recaro interior, has a 3 liter V6, and a 5 speed rear mounted transaxle, which provides a perfect 50 50 weight balance. And it is the last Alfa Romeo in the world. <laughs> Welcome back, car nuts. Today we're talking about a significant car for Alfa Romeo, the Milano. Now, outside of North America, it's also called the 75, and they named it that to commemorate Alfa Romeo's 75th anniversary. Now, as if that wasn't significant enough, this is also the last car that was designed built and launched before Fiat bought Alfa Romeo. And that's what makes it the last real Alfa Romeo. And another interesting little tidbit is that it was the last car to use an iconic suspension setup for Alfa Romeo. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. So here in the US, we had four variants of the Milano. The silver, the gold, the platinum, and the Spice Verde. Now the silver, gold, and platinum all got the 2.5 liter V6, while the Verde got a 3 liter V6. The Platinum and Verde both had a limited slip differential. The Platinum came with a leather interior and the Verde came with Recaro seats. And the Verde also got some extended fender flares. Now I don't really know what the difference was between the silver and the gold, so if you know, please comment below. Now the one you saw in the intro is an impeccable 1988 Verde. Probably the nicest one in the country even. And we'll get back to that one in a minute. Now this one is mine. It's been sitting in my junkyard for a couple years now, but I think it's time to do something rad with it. Now we'll talk about what that is in a little bit, but for right now I want to show you some of the things that make this car kind of unique. So one of the unique things about this car is that it's got a front mounted engine, but the transmission is actually in the rear. Kind of like those Audis over there. And this engine is pretty iconic as well. It's the famous Busso V6, which some automotive journalists say is the best sounding engine in the world. Now another very alpha thing about this car is the front suspension. Now it looks pretty conventional with a double A-arm setup and a shock, but where's the spring? This rod right here is actually the spring. It's called a torsion bar. And this rod actually goes all the way back here. It's about three feet long. Now Alpha used a torsion bar front suspension on their cars from I think 60, 63? Correct me down below if I'm wrong. But this car, the Milano, was the last one to actually use this suspension setup. Now the rear suspension is pretty unique as well because it uses a triangulated Didion dead axle and is laterally located with a watts linkage. Now Alpha started using this Didion setup back in 74 I think with the Alfetta and they carried it all the way until 1994 with the extremely rad SZ. Another interesting thing you might notice is the rear brake rotors are inboard. Now these inboard brake rotors and the Didion axle are all to save unsprung weight in the rear. And I can confirm it makes a difference. All right, so my Milano is a platinum edition, which means it has the leather interior. But as you can see here, it is pretty much shot. Another feature that really cracks me up is this handle emergency brake. I just think this is the coolest thing ever. Now, another cool thing about this car is this right here. It is the Alfa Romeo Control, which is a pre-OBD computer. That is very unique for when these came out. Everything else about the interior is pretty standard. It has electric windows, which weren't unusual for a medium luxury vehicle of the era. But where they put the window switches are, your window switches are up here, and the window switches for the rear seats are back here. This one is also equipped with a sunroof, 
But an odd quirk with the sunroof is that it lowers the ceiling height by almost an inch and a half. And me being a tall guy, I gotta get rid of that. Another cool feature is this little shelf over here on the passenger side. And it doesn't look like it has a glove box, but it does. Ah, nifty, huh? There's not much else to say about the interior. It's very 80s and very European, which is pretty freaking rad, really. Now enough about my hunk of junk, let's get back to that pristine one. Harold, this is your car. Um, why don't you tell us about it? So it's an 88. 88, it's, okay. Um, the Milano Verde, or 3.0. The green edition. Yes. <laughs> um, the main differentiation is the three liter engine and then the Recaro interior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, these Recaro seats are pretty, pretty comfy. Oh yeah. I yeah. I like them. Yeah, and you know, this interior, it actually smells like a new car. <laughs> what what have you done? Because it like that that it's amazing like how nice this interior is and it really does like smell like a new car in here. Well the, the whole headliner head was drooped way down, so the I had to take the whole headliner out. It's a hard panel. Okay. And take it to get recovered. Note to self, get a new headliner to restore that new car smell. And how long have you had it? About three years, I think. I'm you drive sure. it pretty regularly, or just to just, uh, just, just with the bring it to cars and coffee yeah. <laughs> and <house> club tours. <laughs> and... Safety is a factor. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, let's go for a drive. The clutch gauge is a little high. Yeah, it does. Yeah, I, I just think it's just kind of worn. Which uh, what RPM do you normally shift around? Well, Red line to fifty seven hundred. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sure does sound good. It handles nice too, like nice and nice and tight. It's got a got a little bit of that classic feel to it, but uh, nostalgic is a better term for it. The steering is light without feeling over assisted. The initial turn-in is very responsive, but you can feel the lag in the car's weight transfer. Handling is very neutral, with an impressive amount of grip coming from the 195 cross-section tires. It really starts to wake up around uh, like 3,500 RPM. Yeah. And the car feels like it has has like kind of long legs on to it, because. Uh, Feels like you can shift around like three grand, but like you should really wind it out a little bit more, right? Yeah. 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 Speed up. Well, it took that hump nicely. Yeah, it takes. Yeah, the suspension like feels firm, but pretty compliant also. So. Although I, I kind of noticed it, it takes it a. It takes it a bit of a second to like settle in a corner. Uh, I don't know, I guess it has a little bit more of like a luxury feel to it than a, than a sporty feel. But... Yeah, it does. It has like decent torque and I mean, it sounds great. Like they, uh, Everyone always exclaims about how, how great this uh, Alpha V6 sounds, right? I don't think they made any suspension changes between the Verde and the other editions. I don't think they did either. Um, and you know, I don't know what they did for the European market either. Because the US market ones are, right. are all completely different, so... Yeah, most of the European markets are four-cylinder. Are they really? Yeah. Wow. The, V6s are them. They sold them, but yeah, they weren't very common. Well, the Busso V6 is the best selling point of the car, really. <laughs> it really does feel like a, a new car, mm -hmm. but from, you know, 1988. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This part here is really oddly slippery. Duly noted. <laughs> yeah, I think it can maybe benefit from, from sway bars. Like, you haven't done anything with the sway bars or anything, have you? Yeah, probably would yeah, help the roll response. Yeah, like, I, I think, um, I think for mine, I, like, now that I've driven yours, I think I'll probably definitely get, um, 
some stiffer sway bars for it. Uh, I just like the, I like a car to like kind of set up a little bit faster, you know? Like this one that has like, has like some lean, which is fine, but it makes it, makes it slow to, to transfer that weight in the corner, you know, so. Well, thanks a lot for letting me try it out, man. Yeah, this is great. Now I have inspiration. <laughs> so what are my plans for this car, huh? Well, since the cosmetically it's kind of borked, I was actually thinking about turning it into a track rat. Which, I mean, come on, everyone needs an 80s Italian track rat, right? Now, the more immediate thing I want to do is take it to Radwood, which is only in like six or seven weeks. So I have a lot to do. And this is where you guys can help me. Please subscribe to follow the build and keep me motivated. Now, the first part of any project is to get it all cleaned up and nice to work on. So enjoy some nice cleaning action on your way out. See you guys next time.